Hey, good morning. It's uh, time for another Haskell kata. Uh, probably much like the same uh, like I did the Haskell string kata, calculator kata. But I thought let's try and use a webcam and some voiceover. Uh, the timer has already started, so let's get into it. First thing is, uh, well, the string kata is downloadable from the link I will put in the description. It's uh, Roy Osro's string calculator kata, and it, it's it, the task is uh, to do everything step by step. Try to uh, implement the code uh, in as little uh, code as possible, and then improve uh, to see where you land. So the first thing we need to do is to implement the string calculator with the method signature int add string numbers. And of course in Haskell the notation is different, but let's do it. Uh, let's write a test for that first. We call the function lib add. And well, we should be able to call it. Uh, it has a default uh, example. Uh, if you give it an empty string, it should return zero as output. So let's test this. If we give it an empty string, result should be zero. So let's call this function. I'll compare the outputs. And this is something I have to refer to every time because I use some Unicode in this buffer and LSP doesn't really like it. Uh, not in scope lib add, so we have to add it. Lib add goes from text to an int. And of course, for the empty string, it should return zero. And um, well, then we are still missing something. What uh, happens in different circumstances? So we could say just ignore the input and return zero always. Then we still have not uh, imported the should be function. So we do that, and then we have redone the import from should contain. We remove it. And if we see here, the output, uh, all of the tests are run automatically, and it says, well, we have zero. That's good. The next example we will test is the input one. So let's test for it again. Did the string one, it should be one, and of course it fails. We can add another example and try to do this. So if it's one, return one, it's zero, return zero. But now we are sort of starting to implement, uh, really implement um, case by case basis, and that's not what we want to do. So yeah, well, we'll try and fix it uh, for the general case. So that means do some parsing, and how we would do this. Well, there is a read function, and uh, we have read either or read maybe, which returns an error or uh, nothing. So let's go for the easy case, read maybe. It has a string as input, and we give it a text now. So we have to call to, to string, and um, uh, this is a maybe int. And we could try to return maybe int from the function. But it's not asked, so if it's maybe make it zero. Mm, let's see. Let's spell this correctly. And it works for both to a zero and one case. Now, we can test the property test now. X, we should return it X. Uh, that's when we are uh, starting to use hedgehog. Uh, I call it property test, but I'm not sure if we can legitimately call this property test because we just test some uh, many examples and we will not really define it as a property, in my opinion. Uh, 
let's say, for all int. I'll type it like this and define int later. We get an x, so if we call lib add um, and make a string of that integer, it should equal uh, that x. Um, wait. Of course, we show that x. Import these functions. Um, Hedgehog and define this one. I think when doing a test driven design of test driven development, you should first inline this and then uh, extract it. I've done this one uh, way too often. Linear bound uh, takes a uh, the type that you want to generate and, uh, generates uh, in a linear uh, distribution uh, min bound to max bound, so the, the, the smallest and the largest values, and everything in between. It's, I think it starts at zero, and um, it, it probably starts at zero, zero. And Gen says, well, generate an integer as type. Let's hope Gen. Add this to my list. So now it runs for all x's. Pity that we don't see it fail, so let's do this. Well, it only fails for the empty case. In all the other cases, we have an integer, so it still doesn't fail. input is uh, 0 here and outcome is 1. So, yeah, test works. Separated by commas, and it should return our sum. So let's start with an example first. And this is where I usually say, wait, these examples really, really look like one another. So we can uh, extract that. So let's do that first. The thing that uh, defines the example each time is the input string and the output uh, integer because the name of the example is derived from that. So we give it the input string and the output integer for one. Uh, define the function and say if the, the input is and the output number, the results that we expect. Let's say this is a, wait, let's do that later. Um, this should be the result. show the input string for the name, combine it with uh, this arrow and show the result. Then it should work for any example. And lib add we call with the input string. Oops. And the output uh, result. Let's do something like this. And of course, Regenerate the signature. Text end. Yeah, that sounds better. Spec with zero is something that um, HSpec does. Import it, and the signature works. Now it looks a bit differently, but it's still the same test. Um, let's do it for the other examples as well. One should be to one. Let's really add the spaces. 
Okay, it's looking good. Let's go for that one comma two example. It should equal three. Of course, it fails because we never implemented parsing with commas. So let's go there now. Um, we can split a string and uh, split it on commas, and for every number, then we parse. So let's do it like that. Instead of two string numbers, uh, let's uh, juggle with parentheses. Parentheses. Read me the string for the numbers, right? And then use text split. It's in the list somewhere, yeah. And text split once. to bool, so we split on comma. And now we have a list of this, so if we combine this and map it, and now we have to compose this instead of calling it, um, then we have, instead of a maybe int, uh, we have a list of ints. Now we have a list of maybe int, but if we, um, hello? doesn't know what to do and this has a list of maybe something so if we use map maybe um, we only uh, filter results that really have outcome and in this case we should have a list of ints so we can call sum on it uh, and it does work for only two ints it works for all ints so let's write an example first to demonstrate that we have an x and a y, it should get an x and a y. Now we have to generate not just one int but two, and we can do it. Well, let's do it this way. We have an x and a y, we do as input show x show y and it should result in x, uh, x plus y and that works we have the example as well and As step two is handle an unknown amount of numbers, but I think we already did that because we do not say split once at the split function, it splits at any position that the boolean is true. Now, let's see if we I think we can do something with refactoring. I'm gonna try to demonstrate that yesterday in my kata. Um, if we use Hatchet tests like this. Uh, if we fail something, let's say we do this, um, it shows the generation of every uh, for all call. So if you say for all int, it will uh, in the test output say which int it generated if for a specific case. Uh, so we get two ints and then we get um, the, the result of this um, equal sign or should be equal. And it says, yeah, left hand side was one, the result of the function. Left hand side that we expected should be minus one because we f f fed it to zero and minus one. But it's a bit um, tedious, especially with larger inputs, to see what did you actually feed to the lib add function. So if you use a generator to generate the input instead of generators for the ins separately, it's easier to see in the test output what was generated. So let's do it like that. Um, let's fix the function first. And um, make a generator instead of uh, 
a generator that just returns an int, combine the generator for the input and the output, and do it differently. So we make a well, let's copy this one for all single int string. have it output the input that we feed to lib add and the expected result in a tuple to make it easier and then we test the input against the uh, result let's put this on another line that single in string is now the definition of our case that the name of the case I'm going to test or multiple cases, the case format, I guess. It will generate uh, still a string of a single number, like it does in the, the second test that we now have. So we can copy this and say, let's generate this int. Then we have a gen int and uh, will not call lib add or the equality test, but a tuple of those two. And this notation, it does look a bit, well, mm, I think it's not easy to read, so let's do it differently. I use do notation, get that end out of there, out of there, and return it. is actually the same. Uh, well, not with Y, of course. So uh, it will now take that int and uh, generate, combine this into sing a single generator that has a uh, show mapped onto it for the first tuple uh, on it, and the, uh, the act itself for the second. So if we do that as well for the... Oh, wait, we can... Well, let, let's do this. If we do that as well for the x plus y case, I will put it here, and then we do not single int string, but double int string, I guess. We define double int string here, and we take the input that was given here. We remove the for alls because we need the generators. We convert this into the pure on the show and the x plus y is the second part of the tuple yeah, the function still works I will demonstrate shortly what uh, the test result looks like if we have the x and the y here now um, convert this into do notation to be more readable I can see uh, we get an int uh, an int for x, an int for y, and we return the string we want to test and the result we, we expect. So if we, well, we can compare both. If we now make an error here again, now we can see the inputs where where it uh, fails. See, this is the old test, the one that does the for all and for all int. And it shows uh, we have a zero, we have a one, but we expected uh, a one and we got a zero. How did we do that? If we split on a minus. Oh, I kind of parse it, of course. But we it's hard to see because we do not know what the string is. The probably the same test. Test four. It will say, hey, um, we have a double in string and it looks like 0, 0,1 for input and 1 for the output, expected result. So now we can see the, the string that was given to the function. And I think, in my opinion, it makes it the test more... Well, it might make the test more readable, the test results are more readable, in my uh, opinion. So let's use it like this from here on. And say that we, we factor... Uh, test input generator we can remove 
of these, by the way. And, well, there's one more thing that is easily refactored now. We have double code here. The old tests will run the input and result against lib add and compare them. So let's extract that as well. And let's call this property name. Yeah, let's call this generated. I'm not sure I'm hesitant to uh, call it a property test. I'm not sure if you can describe um, this as that this is a property of the function. For all these inputs, it should return these outputs. For all this, these these formats, it should real uh, result in the sum. Maybe it does. Um, let's see. The, the things that only are different are the names. Oh, I did something. My mistake. Sorry. This is the name, uh, the generator, and actually that is it. So the generator describes the case. And if we define this, we have the name for the function, and we have the generator, and if we have those, um, wait, we have to copy this completely. name called the hack function for all generator get an input and result call the add and compare them so if we regenerate signature yeah this is what we expect and now we can do this for right let's do it a different way around cleans up the test uh, descriptions. Well, twenty-two minutes in, and we only split uh, number on <laughs> two ints uh, with one comma in our test, at least. So let's do this for the uh, example. Have any num. Uh, an um, an unknown. English is not my first language, but this is ridiculous. An unknown amount of numbers. Um, so let's say many axes should be the sum of the axes, and then we generate um, a many int string, I guess. And it looks a bit like this one. Wait, let's generate. The length of the string first, and that is not just an int because it would re um, generate ints that a uh, list of well millions, billions of numbers because max int is really big. So just take a linear range between let's say wait a list of at least one. Oh, zero is possible, and thousand then the axis we generate a list of range singleton n so the list will always be length n um, and list is of things and for our input we should say we map show on the axis and we combine that with the commas. The text has an intercalate, I believe. Intercalate it with a comma. And expect results. So it should be the sum of those axes. because we already said we already implemented this uh, here 10 minutes so 25 15 minutes ago let's see what happens if we split differently to see what it generated ah too bad we are only have a many answering only returned two ints wait let's see if we can do it Yeah. 
if we take only three of those parsed ints, then we see that it fails on an example with more than uh, three numbers, zero, 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 one. It should be one, but it returns zero because we only take the first three ints. Let's take this ridiculous limit and say that we implement it for any number of numbers. Twenty-five minutes in. Let's do one more test um, for new lines. So we have another example. Let's call a single example on this one. New line two comma three should be six, and it will fail because, of course, the hmm. The one new line two. If we split this on a comma, uh, it will try to pass one new line two because, and that's not an int, so it will only pass the three. Re return it. So if we say let's split on this boolean function that checks whether it's a comma, let's let's have a check for new lines as well. And uh, all's good now. Uh, oh wait, I think we did it for any string now. So if we do a many in string with new lines, I guess, define this one. It's probably a bit more like this implementation, but we have to generate commas and ints in the list. So we make a second list of limiters. And that list is length n minus one. So that means the list could be of length minus one. Well, let's just not think about that edge case. Um, do it a different way around. We generate more. Uh, uh, if we have n ints, we generate n delimiters. We choose either the comma or the new line. This has to be called first. Um, and then if we intercalate it with commas, we have to intercalate it with uh, all the delimiters. And let's write my interleave function again. Um, we have <clears throat> if we have a list of um, axes and a list of uh, delimiters and we transpose them then we have a list that is there instead of two lists of uh, and we have n lists of two so then uh, we can after transposing them concat them, then we have one list that combines all the ends, uh, that has the number and the com uh, delimiter, number, delimiter, number, delimiter. And if we concat it again, but as a string, a uh, text, wait, now we have one too many delimiter, this we can say, um, in it, I believe. And it is the function of what's going on anti list. I forgot. I use a reload, a reload, prelude that uh, hides unsafe functions. So we do say take n minus 1 delimiters. So we do not end in a delimiter. It uh, has one less delimiter. One fewer, I'm sorry. Um, so this should work. Um, and we have to call this axis with commas, I guess, uh, with an event to distinguish this a bit. And say we fail this again by leaving out a new line, and we can see what happens in our input strings. Yeah, 
generated uh, zero new line one. And yeah, of course, that will fail now if it doesn't know how to split the new lines. So guys, I think it's been half an hour now. Yep, I will uh, end this video here. I hope you learned something. I hope you liked it when I gave commentary on it. Um, let's do this again tomorrow, I guess. Leave, leave something in the comments if you watched it and you have some suggestions as to what kind of katas I could do. Of course, this one uh, I already uh, did before uh, many times, but exploring another one would be fun, I guess. So, see you in the next video.